It's GI June, and with the recent reveal of Breaker and the Ram Cycle, it got us thinking, what if Hasbro made vintage-inspired scaled vehicles and playsets for the G.I. Joe Classified series? Come speculate with us as we share our top picks in part one in a two-part series. Welcome back to Toy Habits. I'm Michael and joining me as always is my collector in crime Larry and today we are going big with part one of our wish list for the vintage inspired G.I. Joe classified series vehicles and play sets. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Larry, what do we have up first? Uh, number one is the Cobra Rattler. I don't know how they could pull this off in the uh, classified scale, but if they could... Uh, it would be an awesome piece. It's I never had it as a kid, but uh, it's definitely you know probably one of the most classic vehicle designs in the whole line. I think. Yeah, um, de definitely. I do have I do have an idea of how they could pull this off because they did this for the Star Wars Black series. I don't know if you remember seeing the ginormous Tie Fighter that they had in Target, but that was made for oh, the yeah. six inch figure, so they can pull it's this possible. off no problem. <laughs> Yeah, no, that'd be that'd be incredible if they could do it. Um, I mean, I'd I'd even take one for the retro collection, but classified would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I I never had this as a kid either. My friend did, and every time I came over, I would just run and just go straight for the Rattler because it was just very very classic classic design. It really is. Yeah, the color scheme is great. That that really deep blue. Um, and of course, Wild Weasel, you'd have to have him as a pack in, um, that'd be cool as a classified, classified version. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. I thought, uh, I thought the Rattler was a great choice and I actually love the removable panels that the thing has. So it's got a lot of playability to it. And plus you can take all the bombs off the retractable landing gear and also the wings move up and down as well. Yeah, that'd be a great addition to the line for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to figure out like if they could do something like stealthy with it or some some way to make it a little bit more updated because they're doing that with the with the classified series now with the figures. So you could say they probably might find a way to make this thing updated a bit. Yeah, and I think I mean for me, I think if they did, um, I'd kind of like to see it see them offer some some concept ideas and let fans vote. Um, you know, maybe you, maybe you want to see some updates, but not much. Um, I don't, I don't think I'd want them to go crazy with it for sure. <laughs> no, definitely <laughs> not. No, I've, I've seen them take a lot of liberties with stuff and definitely don't want <laughs> right. to go crazy on this. But yeah, I, um, uh, I was looking around for pictures on the net and I found somebody's custom transformers crossover power glide figure. So they made an Autobot into a Cobra figure in, in a crossover and I really like the the angles that they used in that particular design. So if it was like that and still retained its wart hogginess and rattlerness, then I'd 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 be down for that one. Yeah, next up we have the snake armor and which stands for the I didn't realize this at the time, I had to look this up, the system neutralizer armed cloaking with a K equipment. That's a mouthful and they, they didn't put it on the front of the package and they saved it for the back of the package. But this particular armor was that that was the mainstay in my battles in my in between G.I. Joe and Cobra as a kid. And I I remember uh, getting this and just having a lot of fun with it because you could either put a figure in it or or not. You can have it stand alone and then have it be a robot uh, or you could put a figure in it. And so what I would do is in my massive battles that I had in my family room, I would put a figure in it and this, this would be the only figure that would be able to withstand all of the missiles that were, were <laughs> raining fire down from the G.I. Joe side onto the Cobra side and, and infiltrate their base. So... <laughs> kind of a super super soldier then exactly exactly that's definitely how i used it it's a cool design and i i really like i don't know it's 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 a bulky blocky piece of equipment but i just i really like the design for some reason it just it just resonates with me yeah you know it looks to me um it kind of reminds me of the like the ad at is it the pilots like kind of that same the same kind of look to the helmet somehow or something kind of reminds me of of those 
Um, and I never had, I never had one of these as a kid or anything, but I, I remember playing with, with, with it at a friend's house and, and it's really cool. And I think that this would be a, actually a pretty easy one in, to introduce into the classified line because it's not, it wouldn't be that, to me, it wouldn't be that hard to produce in that scale. No, not at all, because it's, it's almost the scale of the three and three quarter inch figures too. So definitely yeah. not. Yep. Um, I love that, that you could just break the armor apart and just, I'm just taking this whole thing apart and just, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's cool. You, you know, and, and what ended up happening in the, at the end of my battles is I would just obliterate them anyway with a MMS missile, just landing right on top of it and just exploding it to smithereens. So it's not a, it's not a far cry for me to have this in pieces right now. <laughs> Yeah, I was searching around on the net for picks again, and I found uh, another person's custom, and they made a Snake 2.0 exoskeleton. So it's really cool because they used the the front chest piece and the head piece as the chest piece for this particular custom. So it kind of has a very subtle nod to the to the original design, which I really really like. And I think that, I think that they could do something similar to that in in making this for real. You know, just incorporate some of the same design elements and just make it bigger. Um, I'm trying to figure out what they could do that would not make it look like Ed 209 from RoboCop. They're like, that's that that's my fear if they actually <laughs> decided to to make one of these. <laughs> it's going to look like something out of the 80s movie. Yeah, I think there's I think there's ways they could do it. And I don't think the price point would have to be super crazy or anything. No, but I'm sure that they'll try to eke out as much as they can <laughs> with this one. Yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> Be like thirty nine ninety nine. No, we'll charge forty nine ninety nine for it. Ah, uh, yeah, forty nine or fifty nine, probably. <laughs> yeah, they've re released this stuff in the past, so I know that they can. They still have the molds. They had some Toys R Us exclusives back in the day, so I know that they can do that. Yeah, this this would be super super cool to have as a as a little tiny form factor add on for the classified series. Yeah, yeah. I think out of out of the list we have today, I think this one seems like the most possible. Yeah, there are some on my list which I'm not going to reveal that are probably impossible, but we're not going to think about that today. <laughs> right. Yeah, we're ignoring ignoring uh, kind of rational thought on some of these, but... <laughs> yes, we're talking about toys. Rational thought goes out the door. So the next on the list is the killer whale. Um, I, I did have this as a kid, uh, and I still remember the Christmas morning and waking up and opening it, and... Uh, the, the, to me, this is this is on. It's probably on that that other end of the spectrum where it's very unlikely. I think that we would get something like this for the classified line, but uh, it's it probably have to be a Haslab kind of thing, I would guess. But it's it's got so many cool, you know, so many cool elements. Um, I loved being able to you know just set up a bunch of guys inside and and you know close the the ramp down and everything. And and there's just so many cool parts to that. Uh, That'd be a great one to have in the classified scale. Oh, totally. Yeah. This so I I didn't have I actually didn't have many of the vehicles as a kid, and this was another one that my next door neighbor had. So of course, after school, I would run over and want to play with it because <laughs> oh yeah, you could play with it. There's so many ways to play with this thing. Um, yep. We we had a hot tub growing up, so you know he would come over and he'd plop it in the hot tub and see if it float. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and it did flow, right? Yep. If I remember right, yep. Yep, yep, yeah. It and, didn't, uh, didn't, didn't do much for the O-rings and the figures, because I remember <laughs> after, I don't know, after playing with G.I. Joe's in the hot tub for a long time, my O-rings started to bust, and, you know, there went, there went all my figures. At least, at least they were easy to fix, right? <laughs> yes, I didn't know how to fix them as a kid, but I do know how to fix them as an adult now. That's, that's the one thing I can fix. Like, I can't fix stuff around the house, but I can fix G.I. Joe's. It's important. Yeah. Did you did you ever take your your figures apart as a kid? And no. See, I I did. I remember I remember like the the guys that I made and everything. I remember taking them apart and like you know like switching arms and and torsos and different things. And I made up made up my own characters and stuff. I don't know whatever happened to them, but ah, you Frankenstein. I remember my parents weren't very happy that I'd taken them apart, but I was like, they're they're fine. I can put them back together. It's just a screw and. Oh, you know the at the time I was just like in this rubber band thing, and <laughs> I didn't know how to name, of course. 
No, no, I would, uh, I'd, I'd definitely be in big trouble. Plus, I would have no idea how to put the thing back together. So, yeah, that, 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 that's a big no for me. I, I barely do that with my toys now. So. <laughs> right. The whale is interesting because, yeah, there's, there's a motorcycle. There's also a little, like, jet ski that pops out. There's cannons. There's rockets. There's depth charges. I mean, you name it. There's so many things aspects to this vehicle that would make it a great piece yeah i love those depth charges as a kid dropping those and uh <laughs> and of course the spinning blades on the back and stuff i mean because they had a little button that you push and made them spin and stuff right yeah definitely yeah um yeah i i think like an, an updated version of this would still maybe retain those those fans spinning around as a nod to the vintage piece but like make them like bigger bulkier engines that have some have some girth and some some mass to them <laughs> yeah the ones i'm looking looking at this now they look they look a little frail and i think the ones that i see on ebay usually the fans are busted like the water moccasin <laughs> oh yeah 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 a lot of that stuff it's 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 uh, pretty thin plastic and you know over the time it hasn't probably hasn't aged greatly so no, not at all. Yeah, the the plastic on these things is very brittle. Um, I had I had one casualty with one GI Joe today that fell off of my shelf, and I accidentally stepped on it. It was Duke, and I oh. busted the backpack off in his back. So there you go. Actually, my son broke a backpack off of of um. It's one of the 2014 release figures or something. I think it was like an Air Viper broke the backpack <laughs> off. I had to use tweezers and pull it out and super glue the thing back together. I don't know if I could actually use it as a backpack anymore, but yeah, I, I think it's still one piece. <laughs> I think I'm going to do that because you know how much anxiety I get when I have something wrong with my GI Joes. So yep. I, I got to <laughs> add that to my list now. Yep. It's horrible. Next one on the list is one of my favorite vehicles of all time. And that is the trouble bubble, which is the flight pod. And I thought the design was very futuristic at the time. And it, it kind of still is. I love the like, I, large gun that's coming off the, the bottom of it and the rockets on the side and the big engines. And I like that you could actually see the entire figure sitting in the trouble bubble. Yeah, I think that's cool. And it kind of, uh, the, 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 you know, the dome piece kind of looks like Cobra Commander's helmet a little bit. It kind of has like that, that look. And, and I think this is another one that they could, that is a possibility. You know, I think if this is something that they could make for probably that fifty dollar price point, mm -hmm. and I think people would buy it. You know, I think it's oh, totally. uh, it'd be cool sitting on the shelf. Like you said, it has kind of that futuristic look, anyway. So I don't think they'd have to do a lot to update it. Um, no, not at all. Yeah, I yeah. If if they if they produce this, I would probably buy five or six of them because I need to have <laughs> all of my Cobra stable inside one of these at some point. So think you know yep. let's let's project in the future if they made tomax and zamont because this was a staple for them to get around in the in the cartoon i remember they were always in this thing <laughs> how about a tomax and zamont two pack with packed with the trouble bubble hmm. oh man how cool would that you know it, it, i mean it had to be 150 200 bucks right i don't know if it's going to be that much but if, if it was uh, i definitely would not buy several of them <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, if you think uh, Tomax and Zamot, probably thirty nine ninety nine, maybe forty four ninety nine. They want to up the price point a little bit, and then you know maybe thirty to forty bucks for the Trouble Bubble. Man, I don't know. Which we just did what thirty nine ninety nine for Snake Eyes and Timber. Oh yeah, that's true. So I mean, that's twenty bucks for uh, a wolf with five or six articulation points. <laughs> Those five or six articulation points cost a lot of money, Larry. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. So maybe maybe Tomax could be fully articulated and Zamot could be, you know, have like maybe swivels at the elbows and the knees and at the neck, maybe. Oh, brother, I feel pain. <laughs> be a cool, uh, like Comic-Con exclusive or something, yeah. I, it's funny because um, with the, you know, the major blood release, uh, I went to Target early to middle of last week and they had three on the shelf and I was so excited because um, I think out of Cobra Island exclusives, I'd only ever seen the one Viper before and that was it. And so I saw those three bloods that day and then I went back a couple days later, they were gone. I bought, I bought one of course. 
Um, but then, then I went back again yesterday morning and there were six more on the shelf. Oh, wow. So it's, it's a little scary because I feel like they've overcompensated on the wrong figure because yeah. this isn't an army builder. No. You know, you didn't, you didn't release the Cobra trooper with a bunch of stock. You released a single character that, you know, people aren't going to buy doubles of. There's no, maybe there's some customization value in him, but I mean, I just don't see people buying multiples really. No. And so, so then you're going to look at the numbers and go, well, now we've, we've put all this stuff out there and nobody's buying them, you know? So. Right. So. And, and the crazy part is I see people listing four to six of these in a lot, like they are army builders. It's like, yep. they'll, they'll go, too. yeah, <laughs> they'll go in, they'll clean out target and then they'll just list a lot of major bloods in them. That, that, that's a head scratcher to me because <laughs> you're not going to make your money back on these things. Oh no, no, not at all. I, you know, I, I could see somebody buying buying a couple, maybe for, you know, maybe hold on to it for for trading or or for customization. You might be able to do something, um, you know, where you're looking for different parts down the line for somebody. But uh, yeah, I don't understand selling them as a lot for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. Yeah, when I was down in Southern California, I did find <laughs> another major blood that I am going to use for a trade. So I've I've become very into the trading. Uh, the, the the trading scene lately because that's that's how I got the Firefly that's on the on the shelf there. So I, I yeah. traded a what did I trade? I traded a, a Cronus and Keldor Motu Origins Rise of Evil two pack for that one plus plus Roadbox. So it was it was a pr pr pretty fair deal. I thought. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good one. Yeah. So the next one we have on the list is the Cobra Wolf. Um, this. This is one I had. This as a kid. Uh, this isn't, you know, what I didn't have a lot of vehicles either, but this is one of the few that I did have. Um, and I always thought this was really cool. I mean, it reminded me of the snow speeder from Star Wars. Um, kind of that same, same kind of feel somehow. But yeah, the, the red missiles and, and the little uh, snow torpedoes or whatever with the little skis on them. I don't, I don't remember what those were, but yeah, I still have part of this in my attic. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta clean it's, that out, man. You gotta, gotta take it out. It's yeah. It's in such bad, bad shape though. I, I know it's missing most of the, you know, loose pieces. So I basically just have the shell of the thing, but it's a, uh, yeah, it was definitely fun to play with as a kid. And I think it'd be a cool, you know, a cool one for classified. So I wish I lived next door to you because, you know, you say that you don't have a lot of these vehicles, but you had a lot of these vehicles. <laughs> I, I really didn't. I mean, I probably had, I probably had six, I would guess. That's a good stable of vehicles, I would say. Yeah. It's a pretty Yeah, good... I mean, I, had, I definitely had fun with them. I mean, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Even, even the, the, the watchtower thing, you know, just the, just the, just a single like standalone watchtower even that was fun just to have a dude camping up in there and you know as a as a lookout or as a sniper or whatever so those are my favorite things I actually have that one downstairs yep yeah i have the bunker the surveillance port and the watchtower and i think the gosh i, I forget there was a white oh there was a guard there was like a guard tower with a like a stop sign like i have that too so yeah, and as a kid, I didn't really know that there were that many of them. But but you know, as I got older and started looking at stuff on like yojo.com or whatever, um, seeing all the different just kind of smaller pieces like that, there's a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, there is on this list. But yeah, definitely. Yeah, we're we're gonna have to do maybe four or five of these lists. I'm sure. <laughs> we just run down. <laughs> let's just run down the whole line. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just recreate the vintage line in six inch scale. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Uh, the wolf I did have as an adult because it came in one of the collections that I had and it was in pristine condition and I, yeah, I, I really like the design, um, very, very angular design and yeah, definitely, yeah, it definitely reminds me of the, the snow speeder, like you said, from, from Star Wars and it did come packed with Ice Viper, so, you know. Oh yeah, I forgot about that, yep. Of course we got to have a figure pack in with these guys so that would be that'd be the one and they yeah and that'd be a cool a cool classified figure too um and i think that that's how how you would uh how you would kind of get people to to jump on on board with buying them is you know you've got the the figure that's a pack in or whatever 
Um, it just if they could if they could find a way to make them cheap enough where people could afford to get it. Yeah. You, you know, the vehicle. So. Yeah, I think I think cheap is not the word to use for this line because you know we're paying yeah. twenty bucks a pop for a figure. <laughs> the figures are great and all, but. 20 bucks for a figure is, is pushing it, but, you know, I'm happy to fork over the dollars. Just yeah, I finally have been as well. Um, yeah. yeah, it's it's funny because I was so resistant to this line until I got one in my hands and it was Zartan. And I was like, geez, they actually made these figures really, really well. I was expecting the Star Wars Black Series, you know, where they they kind of did like a, like a half deco and they didn't go all out. They really went all out on these figures I think with all the accessories and the extra sculpting and all of the detail that you'll find like you could stare at these figures for hours and still not pick up on everything yeah and I I kind of hesitated for for most of the time as well and then you know looking at Zartan watching watching your review of Zartan and then and then Major Blood I think I think really what kind of pushed me over the edge was um, just looking at the like the detail and the head sculpts and stuff I think that that's what I appreciate the most maybe is that the head sculpts, um, you know, like, like with blood, you know, he's got, he's got a helmet, but even, even just looking at him without the helmet, the scars on his face and kind of the fade of his haircut and just yeah. a little stuff like that. It, it's a really cool, um, they're, they are good, good as far as detail on that. So I think if we can get some more, you know, vintage inspired designs, like we've talked about before, uh, I think there's hopefully a, a future for it if they can, clean up a few of the exclusives and things too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I hear you on the head sculpts and uh, I'm going to drop the uh, Firefly review tomorrow and you can't really see fire, you know, you can't see Firefly's face except for his eyes, but there is a lot of emotion and detail in that particular face. So yeah, definitely hear you on that one. Some of the updates they could make to the, to the wolf. Um, I, I did find uh, a person who did a custom and they just put a rather large cannon <laughs> on this thing. And so there's, there's that update and then, you know, replacing the skis with some treads so it can be kind of a land slash snow vehicle, like a snowmobile. Next up is the, the dragonfly. Uh, did, did you have this one as a kid as well? I did have this one. Yep. I think this is why they're on the list, right? Yeah, and, and it's funny because like my list, uh, it was kind of half and half. I included stuff uh, that I had, but I also included stuff that I thought was cool as a kid and just never got, or have looked back on and thought, oh, I wish I would have had that, you know? Because I just like that, like the snake. That's something that I would have had a lot of fun playing with, like what you talked about. Um, and there's a few other ones that we've got on the list that are like that, that, you know, I, I know I would have really loved playing with, with that toy. Just, just looking at the design of it. I, you know, I can imagine the stuff I would have done as a kid with that, you know? Yeah, totally. Yeah. And the, and the, the, the dragonfly is, is no exception, right? No, no, it's, uh, this may be another one that I still have. Uh, I know I don't have wild weasel anymore, but. Or wild bill. Wild bill. Yeah. Yeah. As I was saying, I was like, something's not right. <laughs> wild, wild Bill would be cool. Um, I mean, I, I could see, to me, he would be a really cool update in, in classified version. You know, like, I think that uh, they, they would do a lot of cool stuff with him. You know, I think you can kind of, you could look over the figures now and kind of figure out, like, kind of how his, his uniform would be designed and the cowboy hat. I, I, he'd be really cool. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, and, and still, like, there's... There was a ton of playability in the Dragonfly just as it was. It had removable panels, all the bombs and missiles came off, and it had a working winch, and also the blades spun around too. Yeah, the, that working winch was my favorite part, because I'd have, I'd have Wild Bill fly in, you know, and, and you know, hover and drop that thing down, and Quick Kick would, would grab a hold, and, and he'd haul him away or whatever, and yeah, a I lot of fun with that. I definitely needed to play at your house growing up. I think I think my friends were a little boring. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't do stuff like that. <laughs> I did come across uh, another another custom. So somebody did a custom dragonfly in six inch scale. So they took a one to ten scale military helicopter. I forget from where, but it's a it's a toy that you can get from somewhere, and they painted it gold. And and he you can see Wild Bill plus some other custom six inch figures that he did and actually doesn't it actually doesn't look that big like the helicopter looks pretty compact to fit a six inch scale figure 
Yeah, I I think you could do that. Um, a, yeah, I don't think you would want it to be as big as far as scale as the original was. No. Um, just because, I mean, you'd end up with, you know, a two-foot <laughs> two foot helicopter that there's no way there's no way you could produce it um, cheaply enough to be able to sell it. But, yeah. but yeah, I think if you did something more compact like this, you could still keep a lot of the same design elements. Um, and with Wild Bill in there, I think it'd be a cool... A cool way to do it. Yeah, and I guess if you if you don't have the space for it, there's always ceilings, right? You can hang the the helicopter from the ceiling, and so you don't have to take up floor space or shelf space. So, um, yeah, yeah they they should definitely make this. Yeah, and actually, I, I did that with like the the uh, the Masters of the Universe Classics line before. You know, I had um, I had the the Griffin, and I think maybe there was another another flying beast of some kind that I had. I had I used like fishing line you know and, and just put a couple hooks up and i just have them you know flying above the shelves or whatever and yeah it's and it looks cool and like you said it helps maximize space so totally yeah i'm i'm totally down for that i i i, I need pictures of that for one if you have them so please share I'll, yep <laughs> <laughs> the only the only time i did that was when i was collecting the star wars line when the prequels came out more around Revenge of the Sith time, because I wasn't really a fan of the, the prior movies until Revenge of the Sith came out. But um, I remember I had a few of those Republic gunships and a ton of clone troopers. And so I would put fishing line. I, I did this in my closet because that was the only place that I could do it legally in the house because I could you know <laughs> shut the doors to the closet. So I put up a few of those... Uh, Republic gunships and had those displayed in the closet. Yeah, that's a really cool uh, vehicle design. I love that ship. Uh, yeah. I never had one, but yeah. In my Star Wars collecting days, which were few and far between, those those are since sold. But yep. <laughs> All right. So moving on to the last but not least of our part one series, and I think this could definitely be a HasLab project for sure. It's the Terror Drome and Firebat, and you have to have AVAC in there. So, you know, if, if they can make a ginormous Unicron and a ginormous eating planet, I'm sure they can make a Terror Drome. <laughs> Man, I would, I would love if they would make one of these. Um, this this one's probably the biggest one of the biggest stretches that we have, but it's one of the few toy regrets I have from my childhood. Uh, I remember I I wanted the Terror Drome, and I remember my parents saying I was probably eleven or twelve when it came out, and I think that they were just like, "You've got enough of this stuff," and I think they just felt like I was getting too old to spend, you know, the fifty bucks or whatever it was. Which of course now you're going back and saying, what was wrong with you? Just buy it at 50 bucks. But yeah, it's, and I remember, I remember my dad, my dad actually, uh, he made a, like a, a play set for me, like got, you know, when got wood and like, you know, cut out like a, a design and, and like built a, he had like a jail cell in there and everything. And, nice. and it was cool. I mean, I played with it and stuff, but I, I've always seen pictures of the Terra Drome and wish I would have gotten that. Cause it's, it's a incredible place that there's so many cool things about that set. There's a ton of cool stuff. And that is actually one of my adult, <laughs> adult regrets because I had, I, I, I collected the vintage GI Joe's was the first toy line that I collected as an adult. And I got the Terra Drome complete it's part of a collection for four hundred dollars. With it came with like sixty figures, the Terradrome plus some vehicles. This was back maybe eighteen years ago, so prices yep. were not as crazy as today. But I just didn't have the space for it, and you know, I would look at the thing and I was like, "Yeah, it's cool, but I could I could use the money to fund something else." And definitely yep. is, is one of the biggest regrets that I have in selling that. And from time to time, I will look on eBay for, uh, for some terror drums, but it's a, it's a very expensive piece now. But what, what I loved about it, I mean, there's so many parts and pieces to this thing and it's, it's the fortress of, of Cobra. It's their stronghold. And you know, it's, yep. it's heavily armed, it's heavily fortified and there's a ship <laughs> that launches from the middle of it. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just, it's got so many cool things like, you know, like computer stations and, and I think there is like a holding cell in there. There's cannons everywhere. There's the, the, you know, the, 
Firebat launching base. I mean, there's and and the you know the doors that open on the on the bottom level. Um, yeah, there's um, and I don't know how many like what size vehicles could you fit in there? Like, is that a is that a ferret? That's a ferret. Yeah. So a lot of the smaller form factor vehicles. So think of like the Ram cycle, the ferret. Um, I don't know if there's I, f- I forget the other the other smaller Cobra vehicles, but so about that scale, yeah. yeah, yeah. So much going on with this thing, yeah. I I love those two huge guns that are just <laughs> facing you and to want to oh. ob- obliterate your face off. There, I'm a I'm a playset kind of guy, so like I, I I dig all this stuff, the little control rooms and control panels and little computers, and I'm sure that the you know, th- these were computers back in the 80s, so they're huge. So now now they'd be really tiny, so you can fit other cool stuff. Maybe they can have an armory or some more guns and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, you could do all kinds of stuff now. There's there's no way they can make this for classified. But uh, but yeah, if they, if they did, I mean, it would be... I don't even know where you'd put it. Well, did you did you see the picture that I popped in to the dock? I did. Okay, I did. So let's, let's talk about that. All right, so... Yep. I found this picture on Pinterest and I was looking to see if people did any customs of the Terradrome because, you know, that's what I was looking for. And I came across this ginormous Terradrome display that I don't know if this, yeah, it must be the guy who's pictured in it who is standing there very proud. And the thing is massive. I would say it's probably at least five and a half feet tall, maybe six feet tall. The diameter of this thing is probably about the same. It's about five, it's about five feet wide. And this thing is massive. And it's got two huge towers spiring. And I think what he did was he took old Terradrome parts and just used those as the lookout guns for these spires. Man. Yeah, that that thing is is crazy i would love to see you know kind of i mean i i would guess if you built it out like this it's got to have some detail on the inside too right you're not going to build out this whole thing i mean so i'd love to see what else he has in there yeah i i couldn't find any other pictures but i'm i'm sure that there are, are some details inside and i would love to see if he actually put a fire bat in there because that <laughs> That thing would be huge. It, it, it'd it be bigger than that TIE fighter that was for the six inch Black Series line <laughs> for Star Wars. Yeah. I'm looking so I'm, I'm looking at some of the vehicles that he has in there and I think I see a stinger that's right smack dab in the middle. You can kind of tell that the picture's not great, but you can you can see the red rockets off of that vehicle. Mm-hmm. And just the the sca- like that thing dwarfs the stinger. It's this thing is it's amazing like i'm not too fond of the design itself but but you know what it is when you see it right yeah he he went all out and you know i i definitely i definitely look for i look for easter eggs on these on these boxes and i don't uh, on the gi joe classified series and i don't know if you've picked up there's a pterodrome sitting right here in, yes. in cobra island and the scale of this island has to be massive because the pterodrome is pretty massive anyways <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. And actually, whenever whenever I saw this picture, I thought of the the back of that the back of that box and seeing the terror drumming. It does make me think of that, um, you know, kind of the scale of it. Um, because if this was the you know the Cobra base, I mean, they'd have like all the different his tanks and just all the different vehicles you see in some of the you know cartoon battles. This thing would have to be massive to house all that. Oh, totally, totally. Yeah. But. I, I do recall Hasbro making a four foot Jabba's sail barge, so it's it's yeah. definitely possible. I don't know how great it sold. I know it sold well on eBay, but I'm sure they <laughs> sold out on Haslab because everything sells out if they make something through Haslab. So mental note: buy whatever they're making when they're producing oh, yeah. Haslab stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I would I would buy any any iteration of the Terror Drum. I don't care what it is. I would oh. buy it in in you know miniature form, uh, you know classified scale, whatever you got. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah, I I really want them to make this. Like th- this would be the icing on the cake. I w- I would spend five hundred dollars for this. I'm sure easily. If they made yeah, it. I was I was thinking it, it might be upwards of a thousand, and I would <laughs> I mean I, my wife would be so mad, but. <laughs> <laughs> she, she doesn't watch the show, does she? <laughs> Not yet. Um, I mean, it's we've been married for almost twenty-two years, uh, but maybe one of these days. I mean, she knows 
like knowing it's half the battle, she does know that. Um, but other than that, not a lot of GI Joe stuff for her. But yeah, definitely. Yeah, same, same, same with my wife. I think we we've been married about the same time, and yeah, she 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 knows she knows what she knows, and, and that's about it. And that's yep, <laughs> and that's fine. <laughs> well, we would love to know what vehicles and play sets you want in the line. So please let us know in the comments below and we will be back with part two of our wish list. So subscribe to get notified when that drops. And as always, I am Michael. And I'm Larry. And thanks so much for watching.